and I'm the CEO of the Gresham Area Chamber of Commerce. My name is Keith Evans, and I'm the pastor of Greater Gresham Baptist Church, but serving as president of the Gresham Chamber this year. So Keith and I have had a fabulous year of working together as he's probably my new best friend, and Carol Kate was my new best friend last year, so I guess I get one every year in my role as CEO, and I really appreciate the dedication of our volunteer leadership at the Chamber. Um, and without that volunteer leadership, we wouldn't be who we are today and be able to put on this type of, uh, of event. We do want to welcome you today. We're, we're grateful that you're spending the time to be here for our 13th annual Economic Summit. Building Economic Vitality, Our State, Our Region. Uh, this is our signature program as the Chamber, uh, bringing together business and community leaders and elected officials, looking at topics that are pertinent to growing our region. And as you know, today we are honored to hear from our governor, hear from the state perspective and bigger perspective. And also we're excited that this is the second year in a row that this event has been sold out. So we're glad that you're here. And that, that's a testament to our business community to be here of the importance of this event where we're able to bring topics that are pertinent to economic development and our economic climate. And today we'll be hearing just an overview in general of the economic climate. We'll also look at a, a variety of regional developments that are taking place. And we're going to pick up on some themes from our last summit. Uh, some of you were here and may remember that we had a panel discussion um, with some of our East County businesses. And there were several gentlemen who actually had jobs available but not qualified workers to fill those jobs. And that stuck with me all year when we were planning this event. And I kept thinking about how do we address this issue? And it, it's, it's a big issue. It's not just a, a regional issue. Um, and so our theme today, you'll notice each of the presenters is going to talk a little bit about workforce challenges, workforce development. And then we do, again, have a panel. And we're going to hear about some of the unique solutions that these businesses have put in place for their workforce training. But also another thing that's so important uh, to our region is collaboration. Uh, that is key to our economic development success, both public and private partnerships. It's just something that has to happen, and we have to think of ourselves regionally and as partners within the region. And speaking of partnerships, I would be remiss not to thank all of our sponsors who helped make this event possible. Our preventing spo presenting sponsor is the Boeing Company. Our keynote sponsor is PGE. Our panel sponsor is Riverview Community Bank, as well as our other sponsors, Adventist Health, um, Port of Portland, <laughs> Port of Portland, Frontier Communications, the City of Gresham, Warren, Warren Allen LLP, Cartridge World, Legacy Mount Hood Medical, and our media partners, the Gresham Outlook and Metro East Community Media. And we're pleased today that Metro East is here actually filming our session, and we will have these available um, on our website, and they will be rebroadcasting them as well. We also want to take a moment to recognize several of our elected officials that are here uh, from the region. Uh, first of all, uh, Senator Lori Monis Anderson. Where are you? She had to step out. Okay. All right. Representative Matt Wand. He stepped out too. He stepped out as well. Okay. Uh, Metro Councilor Metro Councilor Shirley Craddock. Shirley. There you go. Uh, Gresham Mayor Shane Bemis. Uh, Fairview Mayor Mike Weatherby. Mayor. Uh, Gresham City Council President Carolyn Eccles. Carol, didn't make it. That's okay. Carol. And then also City Councilor Lori Stegman. <laughs> and Councilor Paul Working. Uh, Fairview City Councilor Lisa Barton Mullins. And Troutdale uh, City Councilors Doug Doust and Eric Anderson. And Oregon City City Councilor uh, Carol Polly. All right. Also, we want to thank uh, some of our educational institutions that are represented here. Uh, if you are on the Mount Hood Community College Board, would you wave at us would, if you're here? Here we go, some back there. All right. Gresham Barlow School Board. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. The Reynolds School Board. Right there. And the Centennial School Board. 
All right. Our apologies if we have missed uh, anyone, but we are uh, thankful that you are here. Obviously, for regional collaboration, you need all the jurisdictions here and the, the leaders of our community. And we also have a strong leadership bond at the chamber. And I couldn't uh, go throughout today without recognizing our board members. So those are the leaders in our organization who help shape the strategic direction of both the organization and the community. So if the chamber board members could please stand. And I'd like to thank you personally for all of your work and dedication. I saw you forgetting there, Casey. <laughs> With that, and there have been so many exciting changes um, in the area since our last economic summit. Um, we've seen an expansion at Boeing, which has been very exciting. Um, we've seen the jurisdictional approval with the East Metro Connector Plan. We've seen the sale of the LSI property, which is now the Gresham Vista uh, Business Park Development by the Port of Portland. Um, these are just a few of the things, and I'm going to invite uh, Shane, Mayor Shane Bemis up to join us uh, to talk about uh, uh, within the region what's happening. And we're very pleased to have him here. Um, do you want me to read your bio, Shane? Because no, I, I know no. you hate that. <laughs> so I'll skip that because I know you don't like that. But thank you so much for yes, being here today. Well, good morning, and uh, thank you all. It's a pleasure to be here with you today and talk about some things that have been happening, uh, not only in Gresham, but uh, I think that have economic impacts throughout the region, certainly throughout uh, uh, the state. Um, before I get started, I, I want to say, um, having been a member of this chamber for I think probably almost 14 years now, um, I am continually impressed how this chamber grows, how this chamber turns out, how this chamber activates, and how you all, I think we saw a very, um, a very good example of how the business community in the area, not only Gresham, rallies around uh, certain causes and community. The Gresham uh, Little League went to the World Series. Yeah, yeah, we're proud of them. But you know, you all stepped up and you all gave something to help those kids' family get here. And when I think about business and I think about community and the role that we play, you guys play it out in spades, including our friends at PG that came through with $1,000 for the team just on an email. So everybody contributed, everybody helped out, and that, I think, is the strength of a chamber uh, to be able to uh, network and help not only your businesses, but your community. And so I'm awfully proud of, of uh, the chamber and its continued growth. I want to take a second and recognize uh, the city councilors that are here with us today, uh, Councilor Stegman, Councilor Warking. Uh, our team has been unwavering in our support for economic development, and I can tell you that that is not accidental. Everybody on this council is a business owner or has a background in private enterprise, and that sets us apart in a very important way, in my view, in the region. In setting the stage for this excellent program uh, today that the Chamber has put together, I wanted to touch on just a few key items. First, I'd like to discuss some of the major economic development wins we've seen in the past year or so, in addition to touching on a few of the items that give us optimism for the years to come. In the category of good economic news, it would be hard to find something more encouraging than Boeing's recent expansion. Through the Enterprise Zone partnership with the city of Gresham, Boeing has invested $200 million in the state-of-the-art lead gold plating facility. This 66,000 square foot facility will house 350 new jobs. Now, <clears throat> it's hard to put that in proper context for how big of a deal that that really is. But as a standalone recruitment, if that expansion alone were a new company, it would be one of the largest single recruitments that our region has seen in years. Another big win for, uh, for us last year was our partnership with the Port of Portland to purchase the LSI property, now Gresham Vista Industrial Park. In a single transaction, this prime industrial land went from being managed by a relatively disinterested seller into the hands of a motivated, very nimble, and very strategic seller. That said, we have not paused to celebrate this single milestone. In a short time since the port has owned this parcel, one of the finest in the state, 
we have together pursued seven leads, some of them incredibly large. We will not rest until we see tremendous investment and job growth on that site, and we are extremely optimistic even in these challenging times. In addition to our work on uh, Gresham Vista site, this past year has brought us unprecedented progress in the East Metro Connection Plan. Since the early 19, did I hear a cheer for that? <laughs> Travis, was that you? <laughs> Since the early 1980s, we have known that the north-south connection between Highway 84 and US 26 were insufficient and that multiple jurisdictions along the arterials would need to come together to find solutions. That is where the project derailed, because those various jurisdictions had widely divergent goals and aspirations for the project. Fortunately, we were, unable to sit, we were able to sit down this year and as an entire region and dig through the mucky details of the project and actually agree upon a system of future changes that will meet our ultimate objectives. This is critical for the development of existing industrial areas in Gresham, as well as uh, future industrial opportunities like the Springwater area. Now, I'll be honest, many of you were involved in this room, uh, in this plan, and I, I, I think that the Constitutional Convention of 1787 might have been a little bit easier discussion <laughs> than what we went through on this connection. But we got to an outcome nonetheless, which is more than the regional leaders of past decades can claim. The items that I discussed all largely relate to large industrial businesses. But as a small business owner myself, I do not want to understate the importance of small business on our economy. I'm sure that nearly everybody in this room is familiar with the city's garage to storefront program, but I want to take just a moment to describe the impact it has had on Gresham's economy. Three years ago, staring down the barrel of our generation's greatest recession, the Gresham City Council decided that we needed to take aggressive action on the small business front. First, recognizing that enterprising and entrepreneurial spirit of our citizens is the only thing that has ever helped us claw out of tough economic times, we wanted to create a program that would help small businesses open up shop. Second, as a byproduct of the recession, we were noticing a number of empty storefronts in key areas of the city, and we wanted to do something to help get them filled up with activity and with jobs. We considered a number of approaches. But by the end of our process, we, re we realized that the single greatest thing we could do as a local government to help small businesses get up and running was to simply get out of their way. Through our Garage to Storefront program, we did just that. We said that if you open up a business in a key area of our city and do so in a previously empty storefront, we won't charge you a dime in city-related fees. That means no business license fee, no building fee, no planning fee, no water, no storm water, no park system development charges, nothing. Now in its third year, our garage to storefront program has been wildly successful. Through this program, we have helped 64 new businesses locate in Gresham, filling over 100,000 square feet of previously vacant storefronts. To, to represent that visually, if you lined that out in football field terms, you'd have eight football fields. Around the same time frame that we were putting this program together, we also partnered with many people uh, in this room and asked how City Hall can lead by example in supporting our local economy. As a result, we implemented our own local procurement policy, which has been very successful, and we did our part in to help those of you who have worked so hard tremendously on the Try Local First campaign. I hope that this information uh, today helps show some of the positive developments that we've seen emerge in the local economy. As a hopeful uh, antidote, I just heard yesterday from the planning uh, director that development applications over the past couple months have reached levels we have not seen since the spring of 2008. We have a long way to go, but I feel we are well on our way to seeing some tangible improvements in the years to come. Again, thank you for the opportunity uh, to be here today, and thank you again for all the work you do uh, in the community and uh, in your businesses, and wish you all the best. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, um, Mayor Bemis. It's, I had the privilege yesterday of going to um, an event that was put together by a, a series of, of organizations that are, are working in economic development, and it was uh, the presentation of an industrial land study. And what's so important for us to think about in this room is that the mes East Metro area has some of the largest available plots of developable land, and a lot of it is shovel-ready and what they call a tier one um, readiness, I guess. I'm looking at Ken, you know, because he's a part of the process. Um, and this is a very exciting for our region and very important for us to consider. Um, that's also part of why I'm very excited to uh, have our next speaker, um, Keith Levitt from the Port of Portland, um, speak with us today about what's happening um, in the industrial land development with um, the, the Gresham Vista property and around the metro area, as well as the, the trip property. Um, and so with that, I'm gonna read Keith's bio and well, oh, I am. I, I need to burn some time, Keith. So we want to. We also want to acknowledge all of our speakers for their amazing professionalism. And I know everyone cringes at having your bio read in public, but I think it's important to understand the level of commitment that the people uh, have to the professionalism and what they do uh, to grow our region and our state. So, Keith has served in several positions for the Port of Portland since joining the organization in 1999. His positions uh, with the port include state government affairs manager, development project management manager, and since 2008, a general manager of business development and properties. And I know he has been very, very active in this East Metro area, and so that was part of why we were excited to have him speak. In his current job, he oversees the port's business park at Rivergate, Swan Island, Portland International Center, the Trout. Bill Reynolds property and the Gresham Vista and is also responsible for the sales and leasing of the Ports Marine and industrial properties. So he's a busy guy. Um, during his tenure, Mr. Levitt has the responsibility for various strategic initiatives on behalf of the port, including um, securing public funding for deepening the Columbia River Navigation Channel, public-private partnerships leading to the development of the 120-acre Cascade Station Business Park near PDX, and the acquisition of the Troutdale Reynolds Industrial Park, and the global and recent acquisition of the 220-acre Gresham Vista Business Park. Prior to joining uh, the port, Keith managed the port's economic and development programs um, for the state of Oregon's economic development department and was the executive director of Oregon's Public Ports Association and worked in several positions in this legislature. So we can see he has a broad background. So help me in welcoming to the podium, Keith Levitt. She missed the most important part of the bio, Oregon State Beaver. <laughs> Three and oh, baby. <laughs> All right, thanks, Allison, and it's uh, really a pleasure to be here. Um, I was at this event last year, and it, it was just a really uh, insightful uh, agenda, and I, I think it's going to be again today. Uh, I can see when the governor arrives, so, uh, Jim already warned me I'm going to have to like jump right off the stage the minute he gets here. I get it. <laughs> so I'm going to test the technology. Make sure we're... Ah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to give, uh, probably a lot of people know about the Port of Portland, so I won't spend a lot of time there, but I will talk about some background because it's good context to understand some of the drivers behind you know, why the port has made some, of, some major inv investments in East Multnomah County. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about background, talk about traded sector uh, development, and that's really the big driver. Why land is so important. I know a lot of the rest of the agenda talks a lot about workforce, and that's critical in any recruitment effort, really first and foremost, it's, it's, it's about workforce. But then it's pretty quickly about real estate. And so if you don't have the land to, to really land the kind of traded sector companies you're recruiting to, you're gonna be in uh, some difficult challenges. Uh, I'll talk specifically about the Troutdale Reynolds uh, Industrial Park as well as Gresham Vista and our marketing strategies uh, going forward. I'm not sure my clicker's working. Uh, 
Uh, just a little bit of background uh, with the port. Started in 1891. I'm going to start. I'm going to go year by year and just give you the. Um, I'll be very brief with each year. Don't don't worry. Uh, so the port really has an economic development mission. We really started uh, fulfilling that mission by dredging a navigation channel from the mouth of the river all the way to Portland. And that navigation mission continues today. We have really evolved as an organization to be much more focused recently on economic development and job creation. But we really see ourselves as the portal by which the region accesses global markets. When you look at port facilities, we have quite a few uh, property assets uh, throughout the region, but they're located primarily along the lower Willamette Harbor uh, in, in Portland, and then along the spine of Interstate 84, all the way from, from Gresham right here with Gresham Vista to the west uh, to Terminal 6. And we have various lines of business that I'll describe briefly. Uh, three lines of business, starting with, uh, with aviation. Uh, the port owns and operates uh, Portland International Airport. Uh, two general aviation airports, one in Troutdale and one in, Hood, uh, in Hillsborough, not, not Hood River, not, not quite yet with that one. Um, and those three airports are, uh, we, business has actually been pretty good. We had a very busy summer. At, uh, at PDX, and so and, and a lot of our general aviation activity over the last year has been picking up. So we're hoping that that's a, a signal that the economy is starting to accelerate. On the marine side of our business, we have uh, four major lines of business. We've been a, uh, we're a bit unique from a, from a West Coast port standpoint. We have a diversified portfolio of marine businesses, and that's good for us. Uh, we've always been an export-oriented uh, community, region, and our port facilities are pretty much export-dominated. We have at Terminal 6 our container facility, and, and that facility has more exports than it does imports. At Terminal 5 is a, a major grain export uh, facility, one of, the, one of the largest in the country with Columbia Grain. Also a major grain, uh, mineral bulk export facility at Terminal 5 where we're exporting potash, which is used in fertilizers uh, around the world. The potash is actually mined out of Saskatoon and brought down in unit trains from Canada into, the, into Portland and out to world markets. We have a very large uh, auto import business. Toyota at Terminal 4, Honda and Hyundai at Terminal 6 were one of the largest importers of autos on the West Coast. Uh, and then our general cargo facility is at Terminal 2. I think the area of our business that is per perhaps le less understood than the marine and the aviation is, is on the land side. Uh, we do own a lot of business parks, uh, business park property around the region. The largest is Rivergate Industrial District, 2,800 acres. Uh, this has been an area that has been developed very patiently. You're going to hear the term patient developer. Uh, really throughout my comments, because that's the role that we've played over, over many years. It's taken several decades to develop Rivergate. It's home to Terminal 5 and 6. There's 12 million square feet of built-out space in Rivergate. Uh, it's really home to a lot of the traded sector companies in our, in our community, whether it's Schnitzer Steel, Oregon Steel, uh, Subaru has a major uh, warehousing and distribution center there. Columbia Sportswear has an 850,000 square foot facility there. Uh, so a lot of the big players uh, in our region are located in Rivergate because there's great rail, water, and road access uh, into and out of that industrial area. Swan Island is perhaps our most mature business park. Uh, it's over 400 acres located closest to uh, the, the kind of the central business district of Portland. Uh, some of the major tenants at Swan Island, Portland Shipyard, uh, which is a business that the port sold several years ago, but it's been a very, uh, a great job generator uh, for this region over the last several years. Business has gone very well. Uh, Daimler Trucks North America has their corporate office campus on Swan Island, but, and they also have their truck manufacturing plant, uh, major employer in the region. Portland International Center, uh, Cascade Station. So Cascade Station is the 120-acre mixed-use uh, office hotel retail development. It helped bring light rail to the airports through a public-private partnership with Bechtel. 
Uh, it's just about built, built out, and Cascade Station was a real challenge. Took quite a few years to really find the market, uh, but things are really going well there right now, and, and it's, it's just about fully subscribed. Uh, south of Cascade Station is Portland International Center. The area is in red that you can see outlined. There's about 64 acres of industrially zoned uh, property, and that's really the last uh, large site that is in the port's historic land portfolio. We have spent many decades building out Portland International Center, Rivergate, Swan Island, and so we've been mindful that we're kind of reaching the end of that historic uh, land portfolio that's ready to go to the market, and we need to be out looking for acquisitions. And so that's what really prompted ultimately the, uh, the due diligence and, and the acquisition of Troutdale Reynolds Industrial Park. Uh, what I'm showing here is just the phasing of that development in yellow. Uh, is phase one, uh, and I'm going to talk a lot more about TRIP in a moment, so I won't spend a lot of time on this sli slide, but in blue is phase two, and then in, in red is phase three. And then uh, most relevant for this room, Gresham Vista uh, Business Park. It was a day like today when Joe Molusky and I uh, went over there after Janet Young and I had uh, breakfast, and she said, you know, you really ought to go take another look. And I had, I, I had actually taken a look at the LSI site, but it was quite a few years ago. And it was a day like this, and, and I uh, just kind of went, wow, uh, that, it, th this property shows really well. And, you know, Mount Hood was just kind of right there. And, and it took us about a week to bring Bill Wyatt by the property, and um, Bill just said, you know, how long is it going to take to, to acquire it? And about seven or eight months later, uh, with, with really a good collaboration with, with LSI, a good negotiation with them, we were able to acquire the site. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that. So what are, why, why are we doing this? What are the big drivers uh, behind this? It, our, our industrial park portfolio equates to about 30,000 jobs. We conducted an economic impact uh, model last year. Uh, so the private development, private sector activity that accrues from those business parks is a major job generator. And our commission, our senior leadership at the port, uh, has been very mindful of the issue around wages, uh, that relative wages in this region have been falling behind a lot of our other uh, comparator regions. Uh, that hurts when we are a state that depends so much on income tax revenue to fund education and other public services. You know, we know at the port that traded sector jobs typically pay well. We compete well in the traded sector. That's kind of our, that's our base. That's where it's been in the past, and that's where we think it is in the future. Uh, but we need the land to be able to do it. Talk a little bit more about uh, traded sector jobs. Uh, there are a lot of statistics that kind of back this up, and there's been several studies just recently that Portland Business Alliance has been sponsoring to really look at the impact of international trade on the economy, the impact of traded sector companies. Uh, Oregon is the fifth largest export supported trade uh, job base in the U.S. Uh, one in five jobs are trade related, and again, these jobs average around $60,000 per year, which is these are quality uh, pay. Uh, so I'm going to shift gears now and talk a little bit about the industrial lands uh, issue that, that Allison brought up. This is a very active discussion happening in our region and really throughout the state. And that's part of the background here uh, as well. Uh, we recently, working uh, with Metro, uh, the Portland Business Alliance, uh, NAOP, which is the Commercial Real Estate Industry Trade Association in the region, uh, and Business Oregon, working with City of Gresham and many other partners throughout the region, conducted a, a study. And, and the study was not your typical land use study, looking over at a very gross acreage level and asking ourselves over a 20-year period, how might we grow within the urban growth boundary? It was really a study that was looking at a snapshot of today, what is available in these larger sites, larger industrial sites that are suitable for traded sector uh, development. And so we've been doing that for the last year and a half, and we're, we're really on the kind of the speaker circuit right now uh, talking about the results of the study. Uh, there are 56 sites in the region of 25 acres or more, 25 net developable acres or more. Uh, of those, only nine are in the tier one category. Tier one is, is good. 
uh, it's ready to go. Uh, and a part of why we like Gresham Vista is there are some tier one sites at the Gresham Vista site. Uh, 16 are in tier two, and tier two is defined as seven months to two and a half years before you can, you can turn dirt. And then 31 potential tier three sites. And potential uh, is, is a, an important thing to consider because a lot of those tier three sites are just areas. There are a lot of different partner parcels owned by a lot of different owners. It needs a lot of assembly. Uh, or it has other major constraints like entitlement issues, may not, may not be zoned, may not be annexed, that would put it in tier three. And so it's, it's many years away from being able to be developed. And unfortunately, most of our large sites are in tier three right now. This slide is really the kind of the punchline of the study. Uh, the, the, you can see in the 25 to 50 acre category, uh, we only have seven uh, tier one sites. The 25 to 50 acre category is really where most of the market activity is gonna occur in this region. I know from our standpoint at the port, we've done about seven or eight deals over the last eight years, 25 acres and above. It's very typical in a given year for us to be doing deals in that size category. Uh, and the problem with the bars is obviously the bar on the tier three is, is much higher than tier one. Perhaps even more troubling for the region, we only have one tier one 50 acre site and we only have one tier one 100 acre site. We, we own that site now and that's again the LSI site, Gresham Vista Business Park. And that, that one isn't even a full 100 acres. You have to parcel together to get to that point. And so that's concerning because if there is a big, huge Grand Slam home run opportunity that's looking at regions around the country as well as around the world, they want choice. And when they only have one choice in a region, you may not even get considered. That site selector may filter you right out uh, before you even knew that they looked. And so that, that, that is very concerning to a lot of uh, our partners around the region. This picture just shows spatially where those 56 sites are located. And one thing to clarify, there are sites in Clackamas County that are in cities, but not inside the metro urban growth boundary. So when you don't see as many sites that are in Clackamas County, it's because this is a look just inside the urban growth boundary. But no secret here, most of these sites are located along the uh, Columbia Corridor, along the lower Willamette Harbor, uh, out Highway 26 or along I-5 down towards Wilsonville. So Port's uh, strategic drivers, uh, our direction has been clear for many years now from our Port Commission and through our strategic plan uh, that we've been out looking for acquisition opportunities. Uh, we're looking for larger sites, uh, 50 acres or more, uh, near, with good transportation access, to sites that are suitable for traded sector investment. Uh, a key issue for us is to be able to work collaboratively with our partners. And so a big part of our due diligence, uh, certainly looking at the Gresham Vista site, was to work with the city and make sure that, that that's a, a really collaborative partnership. And that was a, a big contributor as to why the port made that acquisition. Uh, and finally, this is important, and I probably should have said this earlier, uh, the port's kind of an odd hybrid. We are, we are a subdivision of the state. Our commission is appointed by the governor um, our budget is almost totally derived by private sector transactions. We have about 90, roughly 96% of our revenue comes from private sector transactions. So it's an interesting place because we have a public mission, uh, but we, we, we have to be very rational in our investments. The, the money eventually has to come back. And so that's the challenge where we've been, uh, we're a patient developer uh, we, we cannot be an irrational developer. Ultimately, that capital does need to flow back uh, so that we can put it back to work for the economy. Uh, Troutdale Reynolds Industrial Park, uh, this is really a great, um, a great story. I think a lot of people are uh, aware of this, the 700 acre uh, roughly site. Uh, when we looked at it starting in 2004, uh, we, we had to conduct about two or three years of due, due diligence on that site because it was a Superfund site. Uh, the history, obviously, was an aluminum, aluminum smelter, a very good job generator for the region, shut down in the, in the late 90s, was on the Superfund list. 
Uh, Reynolds Alcoa has been an outstanding corporate responsible citizen. Uh, they, they were already undergoing a lot of environmental cleanup when we started looking at the site. We closed in 2007. Uh, and since then, we've committed and invested more than $40 million into both the acquisition and the phase one uh, development. We were, we were very fortunate that FedEx Ground chose this site. Uh, if they had to look today, and this is me speculating, but if they had to look today, they needed 78 acres. They needed to have a site that had good interstate access. I'm not sure they would find that site today. So it was very fortunate that we were able to uh, make that property go from a tier three to a tier one in a, in a pretty quick amount of time to allow that, those 850 jobs to locate there. This just gives you a, just a historic uh, picture of the, the, the aluminum plant back in the day uh, and then what it looks like uh, today with the FedEx ground uh, facility. Um, again, it's been, a, it's been a great story of brownfield redevelopment. Uh, this, is a, this is 700 acres inside the, the metro urban growth boundary that but was a, is a big brownfield. And, but for a patient public developer being able to go in and take that on, I I'm, can tell you I'm pretty sure that property would not be developed uh, the way that it is. We, have, um, we were fortunate enough last year uh, with Reynolds Alcoa and other partners, including EPA, to win the Phoenix Award, which is the national brownfield, uh, essentially the award for the best brownfield redevelopment in the country. Uh, moving on, Gresham Vista. Uh, so last year, uh, the, uh, the former LSI site, 220 acres, it's, a, it's an interesting site from the standpoint of you've, you've got a, a great traded sector activity happening already with on semiconductor. Uh, right in the middle of it, and then you have large parcels on both sides. And so establishing a good partnership and kind of neighborhood relationship with On Semiconductor is one of the big goals that, that we have. Uh, we purchased the site for $27 million. Uh, this represented a, a, a much different scenario than the Troutdale Reynolds site from the standpoint of, you know, this, this land is either tier two or tier one, and most of it is tier one. It's, it's ready to go. It, it needs someone to master plan, develop the site, and market the site uh, in concert with the city. And so it was really, a, I think, a, a, just a perfect marriage. And so along with the purchase, uh, we, the city and the port, established an intergovernmental agreement between us that establishes how we're gonna go out and market uh, this site together. And these are the kind of the highlights of our recruitment efforts, what our marketing strategy looks like. Uh, we are obviously looking for traded sector investment, good job creation. Uh, we're looking in the, in the manufacturing space, uh, whether that's the semiconductor uh, industry um, or metals or uh, other value added food processing kinds of uh, manufacturing uh, uh, leads to clean, clean technologies, supply chain. Um, we are very interested in, in pursuing uh, the suppliers of major employers in the region. So the Bo Boeing is a great example of that. We think this site would be great for someone that wants to have that close linkage and relationship and proximity to Boeing. The port happens to be the federal grantee of the foreign trade zone in this region. This is kind of an underknown uh, incentive for companies that are doing business in global, in really in the global supply chain. It's a significant tax incentive. I know nothing more than that about it. Teresa Carr is here and she knows everything about it. <laughs> and I will make her come up here if anyone has a question on foreign trade zones. <laughs> This is the way that we look at, uh, the way we market our properties. Um, this is really just to show that there's, we're, we, we're gonna leverage all of our relationships. We stay very close to the commercial real estate community here in the region. We have very strong developer relationships. We know all the brokers uh, that are involved in, indust in the industrial space. Uh, we have active relationships with the site selectors and others. But one of the umbrella organizations that we've helped put together, and Jim Pyro has, and Mayor Bemis has, is Greater Portland Inc. And so we, we now think we have a, an umbrella organization for the entire region that's gonna help us 
uh, market and brand this region and, and be much more uh, nimble and sophisticated in, in how we collectively go after leads and economic development projects. Our goal is to really take our properties and raise the profile. And so we start that at the regional level. Uh, we had site tours uh, and uh, a broker event out at the site, out at Gresham Vista. Uh, a month or two ago, it was very well attended by developers and brokers. I think over 50 people were there. The city was there. Uh, so that's an example of what we do just at the local level. Uh, at the national level, Joe Molesky, our marketing manager, and his team are attending these trade conferences that are part of the targeted industry recruitment that we're involved in. And then at the international level, Bill Wyatt and others will be going with the governor on trade missions. Uh, if, if anyone knows Bill, his travel schedule is very hectic. He's in Asia all the time. And so we use those relationships uh, across our business lines uh, to talk about foreign direct investment, you know, what business opportunities could be invested in uh, in, in the United States and particularly in our, in our region on our properties. So moving forward, uh, we're going to continue to bang the drum on this need to get these Tier 3 sites to Tier 1. Uh, we're going to pursue the marketing strategies with the, the land inventory that we currently have. Um, uh, Allison referred to the meeting yesterday. This was a really great meeting of, of regional leaders uh, throughout the metro area, a lot of elected officials and economic development professionals and land use professionals in the room to talk about industrial land. So there's a very engaged uh, dialogue happening right now, and we, we need to take that study and turn it into action. And so there's some policy initiatives uh, that we're talking to state officials about that perhaps can be uh, submitted to the legislature for consideration. Uh, they deal with how you incentivize patient developers to take some of these sites from the Tier 3 to the Tier 1. What we know from our experience is that it, it, it doesn't pencil. It's, it's not going to just be a private invest, investment scenario that makes that happen. It's going to need to be a public-private partnership to make it happen. And so new tools to be able to uh, move forward with that is something that we're talking to our state partners about. And finally, it's, it really is all about partnership. Uh, we, we know that successful development is not going to happen uh, without the, uh, the partnership with uh, both the public and private sector and, and, and with our, our partnership with the cities, both Troutdale and Gresham, uh, and then the umbrella organization of Greater Portland Inc. Is, is what we see as key to our success going forward. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. <coughs> Yeah, so I, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, I know that we have experts here on workforce here. I'm looking at Andrew right now. Um, I, what I would say to that is uh, through Greater Portland, Inc., we have been working to have an economic development strategy that transcends across those issues, including how higher ed is able to turn out the kind of educated workforce, how community colleges are able to turn out the kind of workforce that fits the kind of economy and, and recruitment efforts that we're, that we're striving for. So there does need to be linkage, without a doubt, and the, those conversations are happening uh, around that table. Any, any other Mayor. Mayor, I have a mic for you. I, I just wanted to make a comment in terms of uh, the flexibility and nimbleness of the port. As Keith touched on it a little bit, but I think it, it goes without saying what how impressive the port acted in the purchase of the LSI property. Literally, they went from making a $27 million investment in seven to eight months. Now, if anybody knows anything about government, 
you really, <laughs> that, is, that is remarkable. And when they say that they are patient developers and, part, and, the, and the strategic partnership that we have with them, I think it's probably the single biggest economic development win that we have seen in East County in years. You might not see it yet, but you're going to. And I just can't say enough about the leadership of the port, all of the board members, all of the people that worked um, through the, the real estate development transaction literally seven or eight months from the minute they saw it to a $27 million purchase. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. It, it, it only took us about four years to purchase the Reynolds site, so we, we, we learned from that and got a little better on the, on the Gresham site. Any other questions? Great. Thank you very much. So we're going to take a little break. Um, we have about 15 minutes, and uh, so take a moment to stretch your legs. But when we reconvene, I need you to take your seats right away, um, because that means the governor's walking in the door and we're ready to go. So thank you, and um, we'll just take a quick rest. It's a good chance to stretch your legs. Thank you.